How you doing today, folks? So for whatever reason, my camera stopped working. Uh, so rather than repackaging everything and doing a fake unboxing, I was about halfway done with the video. This happened, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and start over. There's a nice little uh, note here. You also included a couple pocket tools, or a pocket tool. Some paracord for a lanyard. This is the actual knife. It was in the bubble wrap. I cut myself twice, almost immediately. So, anyways, that's about it. Oh yeah, feel free to pause if you want to read the warranty and the funniness of this Greg Medford. This dude talks so much shit, I love it. It's freaking hilarious to me. Also have the card. Also, big shout out to you, man. This is not one of the higher end Medfords. It's still expensive, but it's uh normally just comes in a regular bag. So this coming in a full on case means you had a case for another Medford and you included this. So that that's really appreciated. So before we go any further, I want to demonstrate two things, right? So first off, most knives are judged by their ability to cut for seat paper in terms of edge retention. Everybody says Medfords can't do that. As you can see, cuts it just fine. Here's a couple sheets of paper. I've got two of them right here. As you can see, cuts it just fine. That was actually my mistake. I held it wrong. Anyways, press it just fine. Goes through, little laser beam. No issues, right? Now, Compare that to the PM2. If I can find a whole piece. The PM2 has more drag than a Medford. Still cuts, still sharp. It's not quite the same though. Cuts paper, same thing. More drag, a little bit jagged. PM2, great knife, great edge. There's a myth about it being a definition of sliciness and that Medfords don't slice. As you can see, 187 DP just out sliced a PM2 very easily. These knives are definitely thick. They're not as thick as my uh, Marauder, for example, um, but they're definitely thick. They are thin behind the edge though. They do have this nice hollow grind. Medfords absolutely do slice. Uh, most of the problems with Medfords happened when they first came out. There was definitely some issues then. Those issues have been resolved and they're really kind of good to go now. Another common complaint is the action. Now, if you want a drop shut blade, something that rockets out, you're not gonna get it with the Medford. It's just not gonna happen. Um, but you will get this very hydraulic smoothness. Now with the fatter knives, like the, like the uh, Praetorian tie, this is a T by the way, not a tie, but the Praetorian tie, the, med, the uh, full size Marauder, which is what this is with the same thickness as the Praetorian tie, those will absolutely drop shut. The weight of the blade is just so heavy. Um, they'll definitely drop shut. There's no problems with that. Something like this, it might in time be able to drop shut, but for right now, it's not going to. However, one of the other big name knife makers in the world is Chris Reeves, right? This is a Sebenza 21, obviously has its Red Micarta on it. And they're defined by this very smooth hydraulic opening action. There's no resistance, it just feels like it's gliding on air. Okay, a lot of people love these knives, they talk shit about Medfords. This feels the exact same. Actually feels a little bit smoother. It's a bit more hydraulic and a bit more of a smoothness to it. Not much, the Sebenza is definitely an amazing knife. The Medford is just a little bit smoother. We're talking like minute differences, but you can feel it if you actually look for it. So, two problems with the Medfords. Supposedly they don't cut. Clearly they cut better than a PM2, which is the definition of sliceness according to everybody. Another one, they have bad action. Same action as a Sebenza, EDC staple, beloved knife. This whole stigma about Medford knives, I really want to die. 
Um, I kind of hated them too for a little bit. So I listened to everybody else's opinion and didn't format, formulate my own. And I was like, okay, yeah, Medford's are shit. They don't cut, yada, yada, yada. And I actually went and bought one and I actually tried them. I started doing some research and it's just not true. That stigma just needs to die. Another stigma about, well, Sebenza's anyways, oh, you can't flick your knives. That's not true. That, that's a fucking lie. Um, talk to Chris Reeves or Tim Reeves or whatever. They don't care. They might charge you for the blade stop, but that's about it. Anyways, so those two stigmas, again, they are just that. They are lies. They're propaganda. These cut. These have amazing action. Now, as far as the overall ergonomics of the knife, um, I actually love this. Um, this is, again, a big man Sebenza. the best way I, I can put it. I have two XL hands. I like bigger knives in general. This fits me perfectly. Um, as you can see, I'm all the way down here. I'm also choked up on the finger choil. Fingers right here. This is very comfortable. Do I have tons of room? Not really. Pinky's not hanging off though. Absolutely good to go. This is sharp. Now, will this cut you? No, but it's really, really sharp. Um, right here is not. This is very perfectly kind of rounded. I wish this finish was echoed right here. It's not, whatever. Um, we also have this kind of flaming pocket clip. There's also a flaming six shooter pivot with the pr proprietary pivot. Can't say that. Proprietary. Propiet. <laughs> the pivot. The special pivot you can't take apart. Anyways, uh, there's also flaming on the screws. Very nice. This is a DLT exclusive in S90V, which is a fantastic steel that will take forever to go dull. When this does go dull, this will be sent out to my buddy Ryan Palmer um, or Antic 7 or possibly Apostle P. I will not sharpen this. Do I have the tools to? Yes, it's a headache. I don't want to deal with it. People want to talk shit because I don't sharpen my own knives. Whatever, I don't care. I sharpen lower end steels, S30V, S35VN, freaking 154CM, RWL 34. I can sharpen. But when it comes to something like this, I just don't want to deal with it. I have a day job, I work my ass off, I don't have that much time to myself, so I just wanna send it out and be done with it. But I guarantee you this steel will probably stay sharp for at least a couple of years uh, of hard use. The S90V is fantastic. It doesn't really chip too often. Um, it rolls over very nicely. It's very easy to fix with the easy strop. Um, S90V is an incredible steel. Is it my favorite? No, my favorites are still 154 CM, CBM 154, and RWL 34. But, you know, as far as the super steels, it's one of my favorite super steels for sure. So S90V for a work knife, fantastic. Um, a lot of people also have this conception about prying with knives, right? Now, I haven't just got this today, so I don't know about that one. I pry heavily with this knife. Now, I will literally slide it in here angle it so it hits this nice oops at the camera so it's this nice fat piece of the grind um and fat piece of the blade stock and i just go into it man if you're looking for a, a hard use work knife uh medfords are absolutely fantastic for that and this is honestly i love this knife um i wish it was a little more bronzy a little more bronzy in pictures it's kind of a Dirty bronze. It's definitely been carried. Has some scratches on it. Um, personally, this is a work knife for me, so I don't care. I'm going to add my own scratches to it, anyways. So, who gives a shit? But it is very nice. The uh, flaming pivot contrasts very, very well. Yeah. First impressions of this knife are very positive. I'm going to put a couple of uh, size comparisons up. So we're looking at almost the exact same size as the full length Marauder um, as far as lengthwise. This is definitely a big knife, folks. Um, here is a Praetorian T. Go ahead and change the aspect ratio around so you can see an accurate size representation. Definitely bigger than the T. T is obviously much wider, um, but as far as overall length, Definitely going to be bigger than T. Um, we also have the PM2. Definitely bigger than the PM2. Full-size Griptilian. 
Same thing, much bigger than the full size Griptilian. The Sabenza I was mentioning, bigger than the Sabenza. Definitely a full size knife, folks. SOCOM Elite Tonto. This is in my pocket today. It's going to be reviewed very shortly. Stay tuned for that one. And eh, why not? Little Kalashnikov. This is actually the last knife that's going up for the whole giveaway thing. Um, somebody was supposed to get a hold of it. They backed out, wasn't able to get a hold of them. Um, there was somebody else that messaged me about this knife. So if you happen to be watching this video, let me know, man. Um, no questions asked of yours. This is the last one though. So go ahead and have at that. All right, so as far as an overall scoring, again, blade is fantastic. The opening hole, nice and smooth, very chamfered, no hot spots, no clips to it. Um, you do have to make sure your finger is not on the lock bar at all. So if you're even like this, you know, I'm not putting pressure on it, right? But it's enough that when you go to open it, it's not gonna come out. So you definitely gotta keep that in mind. But it definitely does come out. Again, very smooth hydraulic action. Fantastic feeling. The uh, finger choil is a little bit too small for me. Again, I've already cut myself twice with, the, with this thing, but uh, it works. Um, I kind of have to take my finger and then push it really hard down on this piece to kind of squash it down so it fits. But it definitely does work um, ergonomics wise. There is a minor hot spot right here. It's definitely chamfered. It's not like it's gonna stab you or anything, but there is a bit of a hot spot. Um, the clip blends in completely. I don't feel anything on that. If you really bear down on it, just kind of Hulk grip it. Um, there is minor hot spots right here. Same thing right here. Um, but again, very minor. This is very sharp. This is perfectly chamfered. This is, uh, this is sharp, so that's an unfortunate thing. Also, take a look at these beautiful flaming blade stops. That blue they achieved is absolutely incredible. Um, but anyways, as far as the blade, I really have no complaints. Um, again, I can't like just let it sit here because like you see I'm so close to the edge um, that I'll cut, cut myself again. But it's it's good enough. Um, if it was any bigger, I I don't know. Like the one for the Marauder, I really like it's bigger, but I feel like it sacrifices too much blade. I wish there was a smaller finger choil, so I had more blade to use. Um, this has a, a smaller finger choil, so more, more blade to use. So I can't really complain. Um, also, most people don't have my size of hand, so this is definitely not a problem at all. So as far as blade, ergonomics, style, feel, cutting power, um, 10. This is perfect. Handle-wise, um, this, again, there's six hot spots total, um, and then this is actually pretty sharp. And we're gonna knock down, I'll knock down a whole point for that. It's enough hot spots that it is an issue. Um, is it gonna be a deal breaker for me? Not at all. Uh, centering is spot on. No at issue at all with that. Lockup, Medford's are known for this kind of early lockup, but that is perfectly fine. No give at all. Spidey flick works. Yeah. Um, as far as the overall score on this knife, um, I'm going to give it a, a high nine. Now, I say a high nine because I said I'm going to take down a whole point for like, the different hot spots. So, just to make it easy, you know, nine, nine out of ten, uh, 90 out of 100. Um, but I really want to give it a higher score than that. Um, the, the, again, the issues have to be taken into, into, into consideration. So for that alone, it's going to be at a nine, but I like this knife more than a nine. Um, honestly, for me, for my size hands and what I like in a knife, this is a 10. Um, for me, this is perfect. I absolutely love it. Um, for somebody else who's not into the same type of knives I am, you're probably looking at a probably about, about a nine. But if you like tactical knives, I hate that terminology. I'm an operator. I don't care if something's tactical or not. I just happen to enjoy the way these feel and look. 
So if you like big, heavy duty, overbuilt knives, this is fantastic. Um, I do want to make mention that you can get this in 3V. 3Vs are kind of hard to find. Um, D2 steel is the most common one. And this S90V, which is a DLT trading exclusive. And they all cost the same price. So if you have the option to get 3V, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, D2. Now, mind you, Medford is a CPM D2, right? It's not just standard D2. It's actually very good D2, but it's still a tool steel. It's very easy to rust. It holds an edge for a long time. It's pretty easy to sharpen back up. D2 is honestly a great steel. I personally prefer the, the, the 3V, just a little bit more. But if I had to choose any of them, it would be the S90V, and they all cost exactly the same. So if you have the option, you know, grab the S90V. Again, if you're looking for the flamed hardware, it's going to have to be something on the secondary market. This is discontinued. But you can by all means still get the 187DP. Again, go to DLT Trading. Get this amazing S90V, this incredible edge. It is an absolutely beautiful knife. Again, for me, 10 out of 10 EDC perfection, hard use perfection. As far as just your generalized person, you're probably going to be an 8.5 to a 9 as far as what you will feel about the knife. Still an amazing knife. Um, I want everybody to go out there and try a Medford. You know, people have these negative opinions about them. Are they overpriced? Yeah, I, I can't. They are overpriced. A Praetorian tie should not start off at twelve hundred dollars. That's that's ridiculous, but they do. They are great. I really like them. If you happen, to, if you can afford that, fantastic. Um, this is about four seventy five um, with tax. Looking at probably about five twenty. So is that a lot? Yes. But if you want to get us a Sabenza, Sabenza start off at five fifty. If you want the uh, Micarta. If you don't want the Micarta, 450 Micarta or any type of uh, inlay, it's going to be 550 starting off. Probably looking at spending about 630 total. So if you're looking for that, honestly, I would recommend getting this. I love the Savenza, but if I had this knife on my uh, hard use knife of the year playlist going on, probably I would have said this one instead of, instead of the uh, Savenza. Savenza is great. I just feel like this is a little bit better. So, as always, thank you for your time, your likes, your subscribe, your support. I do appreciate you all very, very much. And I love you all very, very much. You are my community, my brothers, my sisters, my family. And I really do love you guys. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. If not, no hard feelings at all. This whole EDC knife game is completely about personal preference. If I'm not your preference, man, I wish you all the best. So with all that being said, as always, I love you all and please do me just this one favor and do the best you can to be a better person tomorrow than you are today. And I do promise you to find your center in life. Thank you for your time. Take care and please, please, please be kind to one another. There's too much negativity in the world. Thank you. I love you all and bye.